Hi, my name is Ethan. I'm uh, John's cousin, and I have cystic fibrosis. What is cystic fibrosis? Uh, cystic fibrosis is a disease that's genetic, so it's not contagious, don't worry. And uh, it is a disease that affects your uh, respiratory, like your breathing, and your digestive system when you eat. <laughs> so, um, I'll keep going. And, uh, like, basically, or it's pancreatic inefficiency is what, like, the fancy term is. It means I can't break up or digest or break down the food that I eat as well as John can, or any of y'all, I think. And, um, and so that's why I have to take my enzymes that help me digest my food. And the respiratory part, because, like, we all have, like, mucusy, kind of wet, hot jungle parts of our lungs, you know, and like mine is all just a lot thicker mucus and stuff and makes it harder to breathe sometimes. And it can also clog your airways, which, you know, if you don't use them, you kind of lose them and they'll suffocate and die. It's kind of like smoking. <laughs> Why does my cousin have cystic fibrosis, but I don't? Uh, your cousin Ethan has cystic fibrosis probably because your your aunt and your uncle were both carriers for the gene for cystic fibrosis. Uh, and because of that, there was one in four chance that, that he would get it with both of them being carriers. You do not have cystic fibrosis, John, because maybe your mother might be a carrier, but your dad is not. And so the most you can be is a carrier, but you cannot have the disease. And in America, about one in 2,000 to 3,000 Caucasian kids uh, get cystic fibrosis. It's a lot rarer in Hispanics and, and Asians and a lot rarer in African Americans. Okay. This and I'm going to show you what I have to do every day for medicines. Okay, well this is what I do first. It's a nebulizer, which means you pour the liquid into this chamber when it's all set up and then you breathe it in through here because it makes it like into steam and you just like puff on that for a while and then uh, and then after that I can do this which is another nebulizer um, and it helps to thin out like the mucus in my lungs which makes it easier to cough up and then I usually do that last but now I'm on an antibiotic which is this one and I do that last now since I don't want to cough it up or ruin it or complicate that. And um, I also have to do this, and I'm sure you've seen it on commercials, it's Advair. And uh, you just open this little thing and do that and then breathe it in. It's pretty easy to use. And this is an antibiotic pill that I'm on. I'm not selling it or anything, so, okay. And then, th these are enzymes that I have to take every time I eat. I take like, uh, seven of these. Um, okay, yeah, so I take a bunch of those. And then these are just vitamins, you know, like little Flintstones ones they sell for <laughs> babies. This is what, like, this is my, my version. And it's got more of everything since I don't absorb all my vitamins. Okay, and now I'll show you what these things do. Okay. So if I had medicine that I would put in here. Is it good? You can see me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I would <laughs> take it out and squirt it into this little deal. And then I would take this part and do like that. And then this piece like this. And then this piece, like this, something, and that's how you set that up, and I can put that over here, and then this is my vest, I'll put it on and it'll start like shaking my chest, <laughs> which kind of helps to break up all my mucus and nasty stuff that's inside my lungs. This deal makes this shake. So, 
plug the air into here, and then I'll turn this on. It's all hard to set up this stuff. <laughs> and now I got that going. And you got to breathe in the medicine as it would come out in steam. I don't have anything in there right now since I'm kind of in between doses. But yeah, it's just air coming out, but there would be steam and liquid. And then when I do this, it shakes like a... Uh... Yeah, and there's a timer on here and stuff. And I do this for about... Uh, I do this for 30 minutes twice a day, so an hour every day, and then this I do with every medicine that I have to take, which is a nebulizer, all four of them, and uh, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. How does a doctor diagnose a baby with cystic fibrosis? Uh, there are several ways. Um, in the newborn nursery, there is one condition which is a type of obstruction that a baby can have. If a newborn baby has that, the pediatrician has to think, test this child for cystic fibrosis. Uh, other ones are what we call failure to thrive, where a child is not growing uh, and progressing on his growth chart the way he should. And if that happens, then the, the uh, pediatrician has to think, do a sweat chloride, that this child might have cystic fibrosis. Third type is if a child has uh, increased respiratory infections with uh, recurrent pneumonias and uh, having lots of respiratory difficulties out of the ordinary, then the pediatrician must think, test this child for cystic fibrosis with a sweat chloride. The exciting thing, one of the exciting things in the state of Texas is since uh, December of 2009, We've added to our uh, newborn screening, which is a blood test you do on babies as they leave, a screening test for cystic fibrosis. So this should help uh, pediatricians diagnose it at an earlier age, refer the patient to, to the proper doctors, and uh, start treatment at an earlier time. Okay. How does cystic fibrosis affect your daily life? Um, well, it's like time consuming, and every day uh, before I go to school, I have to do all these medicines. And, yeah, it's pretty much just time-consuming, and, like, I'm on the swim team, and I would go to um, swim practice at, like, 6.30 in the morning, and then um, I, I used to wake up at, like, 5.15 during the season just to do all these medicines and eat, you know, because I have, I don't really absorb all the food that I eat, so I kind of eat a lot, and that always takes time, you know, it's the best time, and... It's, oh, my, my doctor's appointments, when I go to the doctor, I always, like, usually miss a bunch of school because, you know, my doctors aren't conveniently located in town. So, like, I used to live in New Braunfels, and then I would go to San Antonio, which is, like, 30 minutes to an hour away. And then I would always, my doctor's appointments would take, like, three hours, sometimes, maybe longer. And then if I were to get sick and then go to the hospital, which has never really happened since I was a baby... I wouldn't be missing school then, and it's just um, really time consuming. Why does cystic fibrosis affect the lungs and pancreas? Uh, with the pancreas, it, it causes uh, a lack of enzymes which help for absorption of fat and proteins, and that's why in a lot of kids they are what we call failure to thrive, and that's how as pediatricians we make that diagnosis. Uh, you need to be able to absorb fat and proteins to grow. And what we do to help these kids is replace it with pills that have the enzymes in it. As far as the lungs go, they have uh, increased uh, pneumonias, increased secretions, and they're very, very thick secretions. And these children have to have a lot of different therapies to help their lungs to help them breathe, breathe better. My cousin Ethan looks fine, uh, but why does cystic fibrosis shorten the lifespan? Uh, cystic fibrosis shortens lifespan basically because of the repeated infections that they get and how, how difficult they become to treat as they get older. Um, we've gotten really good with antibiotics and different breathing treatments and stuff like that for cystic fibrosis, and a lot of uh, people are definitely living until their adult, adult life. Uh, feeling fine. 
the hope though for future long longevity for cystic fibrosis is probably in gene therapy. All right. So uh, cystic fibrosis is time consuming as it is. It doesn't prevent me from doing what I love to do, which is obviously running in the park. No, um, playing the drums. Okay, showtime.